We are all domestic terrorists. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, we are all domestic terrorists. Yeah! Welcome back. Godzilla! I saw a clip of Japanese people calling you Godzilla. That must have hyped you up. That was one of the greatest experiences of my life. <laughs> that, honestly, everyone's like, oh man, welcome back. Like, and I, I want to say it's good to be back, but that's a lie. So do you, you want to live in Japan? I want to I want to pull a PewDiePie, but not not Why the other stuff. Did you enjoy the homogeny and racial purity of the Japanese country? Um, no, that was actually one of the major <laughs> issues. Okay. But other than that, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with Japan, but like, I, I mean, of course, of course, there's a lot of problems with Japan. We wrote their fucking constitution, mm -hmm. so like, it's, okay. you know, there's there are a lot of like. Uh, hyper capitalist elements to to you know japanese modern society living they work like 16 hour days and shit don't they like the work ethic fun fact is nuts americans work longer hours that's what i'm talking oh, about america oh, does it oh, better number USA, one baby USA, number USA, one well yeah USA. let's go well i don't higher rate of suicide as well in the united states of america we topped japan i thought they had number one no south korea is number one uh, by like a wide margin oh, in comparison korea. to other oecd nations and i'll shit, never like, be like i'll never look like uh, what's, Jimmy, i'll no, never look like jim it has nothing to do with it it's no. literally oh. old people killing themselves because they like have to live in a fucking box and shit oh old people oh uh, yeah in japan too actually like it it's, it's yeah. usually Wait, a I lot thought of like, they were all about older. respecting the elderly there they are, but, but they just put them in a little box, and then they're so sad they kill themselves. It's all about the well, I think bad. like it's the same shit that you have here. People work themselves to death, like yeah. literally, long hours, long, super long hours of working. Oh, you're, you're, look at your your G fuel. I mean, not your G fuel. Bro, stop! Don't say that. I, I'm gonna hit the button. Say it right. Stop, 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 Say it right. Stop, 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 what is it? G Fuel has lead in it, bro. We don't drink that shit. Well, what is that? This I... is Gamer Sup. You're Gamer Sup. Gamer Sup. Gamer Sup. Gamer Sup. Look. Gamer Sup. Look. Gamer Sup. Look. Look. Your Gamer Sup is invisible on the on the. Oh. Uh, it's just I can't believe you. Okay, hold on. Point. Go to me. I can't Gamer... believe you use magic. Stop. 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 <laughs> Your shirt. Gamer Sup is a delicious drink. It's encouraging. It's wonderful. It's Gamer Sup. Mm. Energizes me. That's right. You can go to Gamer Sup. Which is happening. GG slash. I'm, I have to. I have to. Not that. I feel mad like when we when we say that that naughty word. Go to gamersup.gg slash H3, right? That's right. That's right. Get 10% off for a free sample. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how, I don't know what happened, but you're, you're like behind you. I'm looking at our studio, yeah. right? Yeah. All of a sudden, like this, this green wall was rolled behind you. That was crazy. That was so fast. Oh, you're talking about, no, that, what you saw, the green Wait, wall. Wait, it came back again. Yeah. Normally it's not like I'm in the studio right now, everybody, and that's not there. You know what I mean? Usually that's not there. It's just like we have the regular background that you see. Yeah, I have it rigged on a button. It Whoa. Lowers from the ceiling. It's so fast. No, that's completely that, silent when it does it too. The green thing is actually that's special effects. The green behind you is a live roto scotering. <laughs> roto scotering, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it live. By the way, I am wearing the same shirt. I liked it so much I wore it twice. It's sick. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, we can get we can get back to Japan in a second. I do wanna. I, I was I was literally like ordering a bunch Thanks, of stuff bro. off the Teddy Fresh website. TeddyFresh.com like, new release. Mm -hmm. I saw a shirt and I was like, "Yo, that shirt's sick." He's like, "You want it?" I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah, you can have it. all you. I will go all you guys. And then uh, you know we decided to to do this uh, live instead. But yeah, I want the I want the oil spill shirt. We already yeah. put that down. You got this one, the, the one I'm wearing. Spill. Yeah, I want the oil sp spill pants. I guess we it has to the go shorts. Along with it. Yeah. yeah, shorts. Yeah. Are yeah. they long? Um, no. What's the size like on those bad boys? Because some of your shorts are a little bit longer. No, they're not super baggy. They're like nylon, so it's it's like a normal sh kind of short. I All right, let's do double XL on the shorts then. Girthy. Girthy. For I want sure. that. I want that Teddy Skull and Crossbone sweater, triple XL. If which, you have it. Which color? That the red one. The red one. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have triple XL of this one. 
Should I? Yes, we a... do. So Sam's got that. Actually, should I get a black one instead? I feel like I'm never gonna wear. I mean, the black, black one. one's more wearable. Yeah, let me get the black one instead. I would, I would wear the black one. Obviously, for some people, this is the right choice. All right, black. You get that, Sam? Yeah. Black. Black. <laughs> get it. I want, I want the send help shirt. Also triple X. Okay. Dope. Send help. Easy. Fun. Easy clap. Yeah. Um, the wash denim safety pin shirt, also triple XL. Yeah. I want the you socks. Want. This one's really cool. We have I, made custom bobby pins. I love that. Yeah, thanks. There's another brand that I um that I wear from sometimes that I guess sometimes it also does like a they do like an evil eye with a pin. Okay. Uh, it's pretty chill. Um You want the keep, socks? Uh yeah, I want the socks. Okay. I want the wash denim trucker jacket, which is sold out, it seems. Wait. Wait, where? It says sold out on the web. Oh, this is from last. Oh, we moved. Drop. Oh, we moved away. This is from. Oh, last we moved month. away from the from the. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, we could probably get you one though. There, nah, it's all look, good. We can look. It's all, it's all yeah. good. No, worry pull, about I can pull it. some levers. Yeah, GGs. I lost. I know the it. owner. I lost the. Oh, you know the owner? Yeah. Well, you know Ela Klein. Yeah. That's pretty sick. I know. Damn. I know her really well, actually. Oh, by the way, this shirt is awesome too. I didn't know this was coming out. This is a graphic that I really like. Laser focus on your goals, baby. This like is one that. Ela made. It's a. I think she made it from a sticker. This is an illustration, but she did a sticker and then she painted over it, and I thought it was cool. I like it. Thanks. I do. Unfortunately, have too many T-shirts. I feel that. So anyway, TeddyFresh.com. There's all kinds of cool stuff. We actually made a skate deck for the first time. It sold out. I'm happy to see. Which means we'll be making more skate decks. I love that. But yeah, it's all Ela's art. And then also... I love that. I mean, it's sold out. I just think it's cool. I just want to show it off. The front is pretty cool, too. Like the purple kind of veneer. Is that what you call it? I, I don't know what it's called. I, I'm not like... I'm not... I, I don't skate. I'm just... I'm talking about wood, brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> manly <laughs> stuff like wood. This uh, one. This yeah, you, you got like jewelry. Do you want to like... Bro, bro you got to go to Ben Shapiro for that. He's the king. Uh, of, of knowing what to do with wood this mm. <laughs> right this i bought me a two by four do you yeah. like you're like earrings right is this your vibe or not i don't have any earrings i don't, ha I don't oh, have you don't do that okay what about necklace i do love necklaces what yeah this? this one's kind of hype I, I love that but this? is it gonna fit me is a real question <sighs> that's a good question you i mean it has an extender i think i oh son you have a small head blah 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 it's like yeah not when i not when I need to put on one of these necklaces. Turns out my, my neck and head are... Massive neck, tiny head. No. <laughs> my neck is normal size in comparison to my head. It's just like, it don't the fit. The people of Japan were calling you Godzilla. Why? My neck. He doesn't um, exist. Godzilla has a small head compared to his body. He actually kind of does. Yeah. He Godzilla does. does not have a small head in comparison to his body. He actually does. kind of does. Godzilla. Oh, no. Classic. Fucking, I didn't realize we were... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take a look at this. This is why. This Bro, is why I was I was happier look in Japan. Look at that money. He doesn't have that. I was happier neck. in Japan. I was happier in Japan. Look at that. He, that man got no neck. That's like he's like. Why are people saying audio? He, Serious audio issue. Oh, oh, is that real? Uh, this Godzilla looks more like Big Ed than. Let me investigate. A scary mo Oh, I hear it. What? Oh, okay. Like crackling. Oh, is that the button? Do we have button issues? Hold on, guys. Not I'm trying to fix uh... Static noise. Okay, one second. Let me, um... All right. We got some static. That's no problem. Button. We got no problem. We take two weeks off all of a sudden. I know Everything's it. falling apart, I dude. know it. Stand by, people. Stand by. So, they can hear us, though, right? It just sounds like shit. Okay. Um, I'll wait till the, the issue What is the fuck? What? Da Who's doing that? I can't <laughs> see because the Godzilla's blocking me. Yeah. The Godzilla's blocking the monitor. So let me ask you this. Were the uh, Japanese people very, sh are they a short people in stature? Oh, uh, they're still writing audio in the chat. I, just I know, realized. but like, might as well talk. No, because there's a 20 second delay, so it's probably been going on for like 20 seconds. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Oh shit! Wait, hold on. I just found something. Ben Shapiro actually picked this up outside Home Depot. That's crazy. That's a real. That man knows his wood. I'll tell you what. Dan is. 
frantically checking switches, pushing buttons, unplugging, replugging. So are the Japanese people sh sh in stature? Did you tower over them? D there. What the fuck, Ethan? What I do? I it, it, I don't know what's going on. Who controls the 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 editing, the live editing? What is happening? I don't see anything. The we paid primo dollars to ensure that my head looks larger at all times. Why is the software not working? You're I don't know what you're talking about. The software keeps failing, Ethan. It makes my head look the size it looks normally when it's not working. I I got no clue what we're talking about here. See that? Okay, so go ahead. Like you said. Okay. Um <laughs> it's like AI, should... nothing nobody controls it. Um <laughs> It, I feel like I should suck on helium that's to speak. E, that's my... Ian's messing with you. Uh, it's very Ian, it's very rude. Don't make his head... Uh, his head is small enough as it is. Sorry, the technical issues seem to be extending <laughs> visually as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do one where his head's big, at least to make up for it. Okay. Yeah, make his head big. If that's yeah, big. yeah, dude, let's do that. I want to see, like, make it a little bit bigger. Let's yeah, see what how that works. Let's see that big ass. Yeah. Did you fix it, Dan? I think we... Dan is panicking. That's not a good sign. Dan didn't, couldn't even fin- Oh, there you go. What do you think about that? That looks way more normal. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. What's up? This is my normal head size. What? What What's now? What's up? What's up, Pit? What now? I'm gonna stomp on some tiny Japanese people. What Clear now? Warhead. Um, Dan is frantically trying to fix. He couldn't even finish his sentence. That's a bad sign. Really? I said. I mean, I think like. Okay, it's... I think we got it. Oh, yeah. We got it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, these are these things happen. You know. Tell me about this. The stature of the Japanese people. I'm, I'm waiting for him to fix it so that it's like not. Well, I just want to fill the void. Okay. You know? Okay. Well, all right. Um, Japan is five two. They're, that's their average height. Did you know that? Five two. Five two is the average height of the Japanese population. Of a, and, what a, and of that men, has though. grown. Yeah. No. Like just it's in a, general. It's mostly fixed now. Um, okay. Mostly. I am. I am still hearing like a little bit of crackling. Uh, <sighs> what did you think the issue was caused by? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, I just reconnected a bunch of stuff to make sure something hadn't gotten loose. So it's not the button, you don't think? Um, it's pro- I mean, I don't think it's the button, button itself, but it's more all of the changes that I had to make all around the studio. I see. Yeah. Um, I think it's sounding pretty clean now, though. And what would cause static in the audio? Uh, there's lots of things. I I'm still working on fixing it. Dan is a, is, is a work in progress here, guys. He's in, oh. out. Oh, I, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I was looking at this. No, it was 5'2 70 years ago. That, that was makes the average sense. height five... for the man in, seven years ago, uh, 70 years ago. Now it's 5'7. Uh, so that's actually, like in America, isn't it like 5'8? I think they've grown a lot five, over, seven. The, over the past 70 years. I don't know how. I think they're just eating meat instead of rice. More meat. Maybe. That's what I've read. That could be the case. Because back in the day, they, you know... They're saying audio is good now. Okay. Average height of American man. I'm the meat chef. Average oh. height of an American man is 5'10", actually. Yeah. So well, did you feel super, like especially tall over there? Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of issues in Japan with respect to like xenophobia, with respect to like obviously uh, being hyper capitalist, all that sort of stuff. Um, but then the other issue for me in particular was the reality that uh, I can't fit into anything. Doorways. Um, that sort of stuff was all right. It's like not the worst because I can't really fit into anything in America either. Okay. Usually, like, yeah, in Japan, it's a little bit smaller. Okay. For sure. But overall, it wasn't, like, that much of a gigantic burden. I mean, it was kind of funny. So what is it that was too small for you? Clothing. Clothing. I grew up loving, uh, you know, like, Japanese denim, Japanese designers, all these, like, wonderful uh, brands that... 
have come out of Japan to America, engineered garments, capital, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's so many, there's so many sick new and older Japanese brands. These are all like usually, um, since, uh, post-World War II era Japan, like there's been a hyper focus on, uh, American culture and, and American fashion, American garments, which, uh, Ironically, I also personally love, which speaking of which I just uh, launched my AmeriCore. Oh, that, yeah, let's plug that. Um, my by the my way. AmeriCore collection just came out. This is, by the way, the tallest Japanese person yeah. ever. Yeah, Yosutaka Okayama. I, I wonder I, where I, he shops. He's still alive. 68. He might be. That's pretty good. No, he, he's still alive. He, he's like a salaryman now. Really? He just does a day job? Yeah, I watched like a mini doc on his life before I went to Japan. <laughs> So, um, you got, you probably need to shop at like the big and wide stores. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah, big but I don't want that. Stuff. I want like the, I want like the fashion shit. Yeah. Well, sucks and to be tall flavors mm -hmm. and, and not every brand is like, uh, you know, ideology or Teddy fresh, uh, serving all the way up to triple XL. You know what I'm saying? Let me see this. How do you like the website? That's fire. I like, I literally, I love the, um, yeah, I always like the MySpace callbacks. Yeah, we did it. Uh, every drop, we changed the entire aesthetic. And this one is like uh, like a early 2000s uh, website. Shop now. Did I just scroll down? And you scroll down, yeah. Camo. Whoa, dude, you're strapped. Watch yeah. out, conservatives. No, people were people were clowning on me because they were like, wow, oh my god, there's no sights on this. It's like airsoft. I'm like, yeah, dude, I didn't source the gun. And Rather. everyone is making it seem like you know, oh, you're you're hyper focusing on the gun aesthetic. First of all. Um, I, I do enjoy shooting guns. I've talked about it quite frequently. I've shot guns on camera. And, uh, oh, you see that? What's that? What's that on oh, my arm? Oh, Teddy Fresh bracelet. Yeah, dude. Nice, I'm bro. Right Thank now. you. Um, anyway, people are always like, people, <laughs> people are always like, uh, hey, people get like very, very protective and gatekeepy over guns and gun culture. And I'm like, first of all, you know just as well as I do, if you know anything about gun culture, like, there's a lot of tactical motherfuckers, too. This is the exact opposite, I guess, of being, like, hyper, hyper tactical, like, doing tactical shit. Who's um, John Brown? Uh, John Brown is a radical abolitionist. America's first domestic terrorist, as a matter okay, of fact. Okay, hey, represent John Brown in the... Yeah. John Brown in the house! But, like, he was a domestic terrorist uh, that, that, you know, focused on... Uh, abolishing slavery before the Civil War. Um, some say that uh, his arrest, his subsequent arrest by Robert E. Lee, as a matter of fact, after his uh, failed attempt at Harper's Ferry, um, and his execution for treason, he was hanged for treason, uh, that was uh, that was what the catalyst was for everyone in the uh, abolitionist North to, to recognize that, like, hey, this is not going to happen through peaceful means. That's it. Yeah. Represent John Brown. Yeah, he was a crazy guy. So wh who? What are we storming with our John Brown hoodies and shirts? So where are it's we? Not, where, it's not even about killing? that. It's more so like I'm. I I love American culture. I'm fascinated with American culture, and I think that there's a lot of good that has happened throughout American history as well as the bad. And I think John Brown represents uh, one of those things that's like fascinating for me. Um, he's like, you know, white guy. <laughs> Uh, fought uh, with blood, paid in blood to to uh, free uh, African slaves. Okay, and I I, I think that's good. And so who are we killing? The Hassan? southern? No, there's oh. no one. You're not killing. Okay. We're not I don't killing. Know. You got me all excited think, on the John Brown gear. Maybe I think button. for for yeah. me, it's it, it just represents a, like a lot of a lot of the yee yee like real tree camo style shit. Which by the way, this is not real tree. This is our own. Patented design, I guess we had to make our own. Wait, it's so there's not actually is it like, really patented? Because I saw the skull here. It looks yeah, good. yeah, yeah. There's like there's like little Easter eggs everywhere inside of it. Did you guys actually patent the design? I don't think it's. I mean, I, probably, probably not. I don't know. That's I the whole process. I didn't do it, yeah. but I just oversaw the creative part. But um, we had to make our own uh, pattern. Yeah, I see that it looks sick. I um, think I think it came out really good. But yeah, I think for me, it's like uh, it's not just about uh, you know. Tough. D.E. redneck culture doesn't have to always be about like right wing conservatism. You know, there it mean? is. We're up, we're reappropriating redneck pretty much. Culture. Yeah, my culture's not your prom dress type shit. <laughs> well, there it is, guys. Shop it at ideology .shop. Link in the description. Yeah. All right, we got to kind of.
we gotta hit the ground running, so to speak, because I have a hard out today, actually. I am going to the dermatologist. I don't, did you notice I've got like crazy puffy eyes? I did not notice that. I thought you were just kind of sleepy. I got a rash and I've been taking a ton of Benadryl and I was hoping it'd get, be better this morning. It's not, it's worse. Tell them what it's from. I, I, look, I don't know what it's from, it but it might pizza? be from eating Beast Burger. Shut the fuck up. It's, I swear to God, it's all I ate yesterday. And I started developing it last night. Oh my lord! It now, was, it, now, it was two days ago. But yeah. or la I, now, obviously, I don't know, and I, I, could, I could never say that Beast Burger gave me a rash. But I think Beast Burger gave me a rash. Well, which one? Which burger? I got everything. You I was got doing everything. A taste test. <laughs> Wait, what are the What are the Beast Burger burgers like? Was it Was it the Dream Burger? Like who Who Which content creator specifically gave you the rash? You think? <laughs> It was Mr. Beast for sure. Yeah, it was a Mr. Beast one. Oh no! No, I w it was a anyway. So let's so anyway, let's move on. I gotta leave at like twelve thirty. I don't know. Lena will tell me. But a lot's happened. We got a lot to get to. Uh, first of all, something that I think we always like to touch on is the updates with Donald Trump's uh, nicknames for DeSantis. Today he's established or he's testing out Tiny D. Tiny Love D that. DeSantis. Very good. He also floated it's ice. Ron Dishonest. I love it. I don't like that Ron as dishonest. much. Not bad, but I don't like it as much. Tiny D's very good. Meatball Ron is the best. So he disavowed Meatball Ron. He says that was never in the running. Meatball Ron. Um, but also there's Ron D Establishment. That one seems a little forced. Ron D Establishment. Ron D Establishment. He needs to stay away from like. like Words with uh, too many letters in them, <laughs> too many syllables. Because like, because yeah. he's look, you're trying to market to an audience of of baboons, right? And like, if you make it too convoluted, too complicated, they're just gonna be like, I don't fucking I don't deep know. state Ron. Why is he not taking our freaking suggestion? Because deep state Ron. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder why Ron. The establishment is like, it actually hits him on like an. A genuine talking point though unlike many of the other ones so that's he's got to find a way to, to make that message more clear in my opinion because Ron DeSantis is the establishment he's just LARPing as like a Trumpian style Republican well I guess Trump is also technically the establishment. it doesn't even matter what's true that's that's this was he could do anything with these names you know what I mean he could do Ron the leprechaun they'd be like yo we hate leprechauns <laughs> True, which is why Meatball yeah. Ron was so good. Yeah, I liked Meatball Ron. Because it's like anti-Italian slander, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Hey, the culture war since you were gone was the Hershey's. Hershey responds to backlash over Women's Day campaign <clears throat> featuring trans activists. Did you see that Like, there was a whole conservative meltdown because they... This was a Canadian program they did uh -huh. to celebrate Women's Day, and they featured a trans activist. Her How or dare she. they? And there was like a whole... Uh, culture war fallout. In fact, our favorite people over at the Daily Wire are now launching in competition, not just with Hershey's, but with Mr. Beast. Okay, and that is where the real problem arises. What? No, they're not. They made their own chocolate. Feastables, <laughs> Feastables is not collaborating with the Daily Wire. No, I mean they're they're competing in the chocolate market. Oh, okay. I thought you were making it seem like no, Mr. Beast uh, Daily Wire Feastables collab was coming out or no, something no, like no. transphobia chocolate. So this is the co-creator of Daily Wire with Ben Benny Boy. Stop giving your money to woke chocolate companies that hate you. Give it to me instead. This man is trying to make money in chocolate. I can't imagine that there's like a lot of money to make there, but let's see. International Women's Day is upon us again. I mean, and I love an internet. Wait, this is one thing that's like sick about like chocolate is that like they definitely are using slaves. So I'm I feel like that's a that's a real big bonus for the Daily Wire. Like Daily Wire is like we're doing slavery, which is why we got into it. Like <laughs> we're not even going to make money out of this. That's we just true. love using child slaves. So most companies be like, "Yo, we need to audit the manufacturers to make sure they're not using child slaves." He's like, "No, no, no, no." Hold I on. want the child slaves. I forgot to mention. Supreme Court protected child slaves. And by that, I don't mean the Supreme Court is protecting the child slaves. I mean, the Supreme Court is protecting the rights of international American corporations using child slave labor. That is a Supreme well, Court. Well, kids need income. Yeah. 
Nobody wants to work anymore. I mean, good thing that, uh, you know, child slavery used to be for like, I don't know, uh, for the past like 20, 30 years, child slavery was kind of like a, you know, global South, third world, victims of colonial exploitation uh, country type thing. But many states in the United States of America are also rolling back child labor laws, child labor protections, specifically so we can have our own child slaves. Dude, there was a huge scandal recently about child slaves in America or child tra- child laborers yes, in America. Child laborers. Like I, I was reading, uh, they're, they're migrant workers. They come yeah. looking for work, but they put them in super dangerous jobs and like a I bunch find of them that, are dying. I find that to be awesome because, uh, you know, it happened in the Alabama Hyundai uh, facilities. Right. Um, and then it came out, according to the uh, investigations conducted by, uh, I believe it was the NLRB, uh, that uh, multiple companies were also utilizing like sanitation services that had like children uh, operating with uh, children. Like oh, we're talking 13, 14 year olds, by the way. And um, instead of looking at that and going, this is insane. How the fuck is this happening? Um, a bunch of states decided, let's just roll back child labor laws, I think. Kids I agree. Love Hitler. Well, we need workers, and these kids need money, because, listen, I'm not giving my kids money for that school lunch. Hell no. That price went up. You know, that $250 do- pizza dollar slice, $250 slice is now $5, and I am saying get a fucking job now. Theodore's already working in the coal mine, and he's three and a half. What's your excuse? Exactly. I, I have none. Oh, but anyway, Daily Wire is pro-child slavery, and that's what they're after here. International Women's Day is upon us again, and I love an international woman. But our friends over at Hershey's, they don't even know what a woman is. They've hired a biological male to be the spokesperson for their Women's Day campaign, and they're calling that campaign, and I swear I'm not making this up, her she. I mean, it's kind of clever. Wait, pause it. Wait, go back, yeah. go back. Just real quick, to the to the shot of all three of them. Yeah. Making this up. Brother, you are literally her. shorter than the biological female next to you. You know what I mean? Why is it the gender binary? Like, the gender is a binary. Guys are always, like, barely fitting in the same fucking binary that they're trying to advocate for. Also, Michael Knowles here is, like, his butler. Yeah. He's, like, his little slave boy. It's always weird to see that kind of thing. Uh. Bray Cooper looks good, she. though. Good for her. I her feel she. like she's eventually going to come to her senses and realize she? that's uh that's a, a female femme shabibo oh she has a show yeah she's like their femme young shabibo? yeah she's like their young uh content creator that's like supposed to be uh youth facing okay we love that for her yeah, she does, like, a fake live stream that's not a real live stream and like acts like she's responding to chat really How do you yeah know fake because it's not a live stream they just they it's it's vods it's not even a vod like even- it's it's like a YouTube video, but it's uh, shot in a way where like she's like kind of she is shot in a way like she's responding to a live chat. I wonder why they do that. Huh. I wonder if the, <laughs> seems like there's a very successful pol- political content creator out there that does that. So they just pol- basically ripped it. You think they're ripping you off? I mean, I don't give a shit. Whatever. I didn't, Say it. I didn't you think invent. They, you think she's ripping you off? No, I mean, I don't care. There's no IP or anything. It's not like I no, invented no, 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 no. it. You create. She's ripping you off. I did not say that. I said something along those lines, and I think she made a video about it, and when, like her fan base was very oh. upset at me. I've never seen or heard of her, so I guess she's not that popular. But anyway, here's Michael Knowles. Look at this Michael Knowles here, who's his little slave boy. I love that for him. She. Her she. It's not that bad. It's kind of clever. I mean, I, I don't know. It's a little cringy, but it's not like it's also kind of clever. It's humiliating. And it's the reason that I'm launching Jeremy's chocolate. We have two kinds. It's like, bro, what do you know about chocolate? Like just because trans people exist doesn't mean that you get to like make good chocolate. I it doesn't matter. The it, the product could be cardboard. They're they're not yeah. banking on it tasting good. They're banking on it being anti-trans, which is so. <laughs> it's insane to me that now nowadays it's just like, yeah, this this is called fuck trans people uh, underwear. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wear this if you want to fucking tell everybody you hate trans people. The grift is so on display here. It's like, oh well, here's a culture war thing. Now I'm gonna make money from it. You yeah. need to send me money to prove which is, how much you hate. 
woke cult culture. The irony is they're putting the cart before the horse, right? Like, this is why, you know, the Gina Carano special, uh, the, the movies that they've come out with on the Daily Wire kind of suck. Mm. And nobody wants to watch it. And they gross like $800 in the first uh, weekend box office, right? Um, because these companies make a product and then they market it sometimes in a misogynistic fashion. And then sometimes in this, like now in this era, in a very, uh, you know, bullshit pandering pro trans pro women message. Right. But that's just marketing. Like ultimately they still have the product. So if your entire goal is to just basically only do marketing without ever focusing on the product, without ever establishing yourself as a brand, then that's all you're doing. You're just like a, a, a marketing company. Well, they developed a chocolate bar in like a week. Which, so I'll tell you what they did 100%. They went to an existing chocolate factory and said, hey, can you put our label on yours? And that's what happens. That's how you make your own chocolate bar in a week. It could even be Hershey's, let's be real. The yeah. chocolate company that made it, probably owned by Hershey's. Yeah, also, <laughs> Hershey's possible. is yeah. awful. Like, literally awful. Yeah, it tastes like doo-doo. It, it tastes like vomit because of a chemical that they, like, purposely left in because it gives a unique taste, I guess. It is unique, I will say it is, that. Yeah, uniquely vomit-inducing taste of vomit. So I don't know why the fuck, like, I mean, I would not go to the Hershey's factory is what I'm saying. <laughs> From what I can see on why, Hershey's... Why, are you the... <laughs> Yes. From what I can see on the Hershey's uh, <laughs> Facebook page, their first promotion of the Hershey thing was February twentieth. Oh, they've been um, going on for this. We've been going on for this. Yeah, but um, that one doesn't look like it includes the trans bar. So it looks like that actually got introduced, like you said, just like a week or two ago. Yeah, I yeah, and it oh. didn't even get introduced in America, like you guys were saying it was right. in Canada, right? Because yeah, I and it's Canada. And right. look at this. You can that bar that looks like a prop, dude. Like, come on, that ain't no chocolate. Yeah, I don't think that. they. I don't think they have the product. Stop because, it. But in this day and age, because of like ghost kitchens and because of the way that like you can basically do white glove production for pretty much anything, mm. um, you can <laughs> you can act like you have a brand. You can act like you have a product before you even actually have your fucking hands on the product and basically do drop shipping for anything. Mm, for straight anything from at all. And <laughs> yeah, and I, that's what they're doing. That's why everybody Jeremy, wants to become an influencer. Jeremy. Talk with we have two kinds. She, her, and he, him. One of them's got nuts. If you need me to tell you which one it is, keep giving your money to Hershey. This guy is such a little fucking piece little of sh goblin. He, he's <laughs> Why did he think that was a good face to make? He's creepy, Ugh. man. Why did nobody tell him, don't make that face, dog? It's very scary. Mets. I love Michael, Mets. stop. You're scaring the hose. Nah, bro. I don't like Jeremy either. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's so weird. Your money Look at Hershey's. his face. But if you're tired of giving your money to woke corporations <laughs> that hate you, and you're looking for a delicious chocolate bar from a company that actually wants your business, head over to IHateHershey's.com <laughs> and order Jeremy's chocolate today. Let's go there. I want to see how much their bars Bro, are. I'm sorry. There's no fucking shot this is like a viable business, no, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. It's like people aren't, they're not trying to like just, nobody wants to buy chocolate from you, Jeremy. I'm sorry. Chocolate, I hate, mocha, oh, I, I hate color. Jeremy. I hate her. She's. Did I spell it right? With the S? Her she? Her she's? This is why I'm pro Mr. Beast chocolate, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm on Team Feastables, oh, guys. Oh, you gotta buy in bulk, brother. Oh my Four god. Four packs is $25? It's actually not that bad, is it? Four okay. candy bars? Four chocolate bars for twenty. Joe Brandon's America. Wait, how is that a good yeah, deal? No, that's that's insanely high. It's, price. it's one chocolate bar. It's expensive. I mean, how much does a Hershey's bar cost? Ninety nine cents, baby. Is it still ninety nine cents? I, I don't know. I mean, that <laughs> you just made that up. It, it can't milk, be much more yeah. than that. I mean, who's paying for it more than that? I don't know. The last time I bought, I know a Hershey's for sure bar, as hell. But... A chocolate bar co doesn't cost six bucks, seven dollars. I think isn't that like Feastables brand? Uh, uh, Feastables is like the same. No, Feastables is like no Hershey's chocolate milk uh, candy bar. Six count is six dollars and thirty nine cents right now at Target. Mm, what a deal! I Fuck, fucking told dude. you, hundred bucks for a twenty four pack. Bro, I'm pack telling you, dude. dude. Joe Brandon's America. Inflation <laughs> has hit all, even including, but not limited to vomit tasting candy. <laughs> Yo, chocolate. they got fair trade cocoa butter, you dudes. Fair trade organic. That sounds pretty sugar. weak. 
Yeah, or why are wheat, they doing fair wheat, trade? Whoa. How about some unfair trade? What's going uh, on? Unfair fair trade, trade means chocolate. we're doing bad deals, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying they got the woke ingredients. Yeah. We did not eviscerate the global south so we could not take advantage of child slavery, my man. What the fuck's going on? It's one of the most hyper-exploitative industries out there. What is this fair trade nonsense? Soy free. Don't you're rest assured, my friend. I think that's for allergies, by the way. I don't think that's like <laughs> I don't think you need I don't to say they, soy free on it. I don't think they bar. specified that because we're like, oh, this is soy free. I think Jeremy's chocolate, bro. You know? I'm telling you, it's this is weak sauce, okay? Especially <laughs> when you got the Supreme Court allowing Nestle and Hershey and all these other companies to like continue using uh, third party contracted, of course, not directly, but third party contracted child slavery. Um, and these guys are doing fair trade. Bullshit. Everyone in the comments is like, yo, where's the ingredient list? I need to make sure it doesn't include seed oil. Yeah, That's awesome. right. Anyway, okay, so there it is. Daily Wire is, again, riding the, uh, riding the, the, the Gr wave, the, the grift. grift train. Yeah, the grift train is, is going all speed ahead. So we love that for them. Thank you. Yes. Also, um... Don Jr. Bur oh, the the actual bars. I'm so sorry. I got to go back. I was wrong. The actual Hershey's milk chocolate candy bar, full size, 1.55 ounces bar, like the same ones, are one dollar and twenty four cents at Walmart. Thank you. What I was looking at was a pack. A Thank pack you, of bro. Them, uh, Six dollars. Exactly. This man's trying to sell me a chocolate bar for like seven and a half dollars. Yeah, yeah. I was wrong. I was so wrong about that. So and here, the one with almonds is two dollars. So here's um, speaking of chocolate, here's Don Jr. doing a <laughs> Willy Wonka leftovers. I'm giving a tour of the friend of the show, Wonka. friend of the show, uh, Don Jr. Check under your seats. Check under your seats. If there happens to be a gold chocolate bar, if there happens there, to be a gold chocolate that's a bar, VIP, oh, I'm not joking. That's a VIP ticket to my father's chocolate factory. No, he goes uh uh. I hate Oprah, but yo, she kind of got good ideas. Reception tomorrow at CPAC. Uh, check under. There it is. So we're doing a little bit of a Willy Wonka out there. So the chocolate game is running deep. Good luck with all of that. <laughs> instead, of, instead of chocolate, the factory is the racism factory. Mm -hmm. Got them. Ship it out, baby. Package it up. Uh, moving on, I want to talk about CPAC, which is the C Conservative Political Action Conference. This is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Hassan. The What's biggest, up? the most important conservative kind of like meeting of minds, is that right? Yeah, but it, it dramatically fell off. It did. Uh, it, it fell off a lot because there's a division happening within the Republican Party. <clears throat> While CPAC was happening, uh, Club for Growth, which is like the Koch brothers backed, like institutionalist Republicans, uh, you know, who, who do uh, genuinely undermine American democracy every step of the way. Like, they are significantly better terrorists than, like, Osama bin Laden ever could dream of. Mm -hmm. Those guys were running their own show down in Florida. And, you know, you understand who their, uh, you know, you understand who their dog in the fight is, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so there's this rift within the Republican Party currently, and I think that rift consists of the Ron DeSantis camp of, like, institutionalist Republicans who just, like, don't want to rock the boat and keep want to undermining, like, social safety nets and and you know do deregulation and stuff but like not have it get too far out of hand so much so that like liberals actually react to it and and are forced into action mm -hmm. you know what i mean because they're like really angry yeah um and they believe that ron DeSantis will be that guy to give them like a little bit just enough culture war issues but um still maintain uh a a uh a delicate balance where they're able to like effectively legislate. And I think Ron DeSantis, unlike Donald Trump is, is a party guy. He is a political machine guy. Mm -hmm. Whereas Don, Donald Trump can sometimes uh, say insane stuff from the bully pulpit and is uh, somewhat uncontrollable mm -hmm. because he is mostly just fueled by his narcissistic desires, self-preservation and the like. The so he'll, he'll throw like Republicans under the bus in a way that Ron DeSantis never would. Right. So that's why there's this rift now. And because there's this rift, um, CPAC was not as well attended. Did you see the video of the uh, Trump uh, the Trump speech at CPAC? No, no. The, the auditorium was, was not even full. 
It wasn't full. I think we must have that in here. I've got some highlights. But yeah, I mean, that that gap between DeSantis and Trump is going to be what makes this all so fun to watch this coming uh, primary. But there were some really incredible things. And the point I say is CPAC really does represent, I think, popular opinions within the conservative Republican Party. And so when they have someone who like Michael Knowles, who is. I, can, I want to put this in, in terms that is actually accurate. He is a genocidal freak. He is like a actual genocidal yeah. fucking yeah, not only psychotic is he a gremlin, freak. Not only is he a gremlin uh, and, and a <laughs> lapdog of, of this Jeremy Boring guy, but he also is like trying He's to do deranged. his own like Matt Walsh shit. Like he... This is him biting Matt Walsh's aesthetic of, like, uh, you know, wanting to eradicate trans people. You know what I mean? Well, so here's a speech that he delivered on the floor of CPAC, the most popular uh, Republican, you know, coming of great minds. Check this out. There can be no... Trigger warning, genocide. Yeah. Middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. If transgenderism is true, if men really can become women then it's true for everybody of all ages. If transgenderism is false, as it is, if men really can't become women, as they cannot, then it's false for everybody, too. And if it's false, then we should not indulge it, especially since that indulgence requires taking away the rights and customs. He's so self-assured. So he thinks he's if spitting. It is false, he's such a fucking Look at his freak. face. He's like, yeah, oh, no. I'm killing it right yeah. now. I'm killing the speech. Uh, totally. Just Attention starved Requires freak. taking away the rights and customs of so many people. How the fuck do trans people take away the rights and customs? Like, that's even a stretch. I, I don't even know what. Well, they can't make, they can't make a real argument about anything, so they just have right. to make shit up. The idea is always the same. It's like the existence of, of black people in white spaces somehow takes away from white people's rights and privileges when that's not the case, right? Same with gay people, same with trans, trans people. Trans people are absorbing our rights, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the, the red pill guys do a similar thing when they talk about, like, women in the workplace taking away the rights and liberties of men because women and men should well, not. No, but at least, like, there's some coherent argument in that, like, oh, they're replacing men because you can, if you have one employment spot, it could be a man or a woman. The trans thing, I don't get. What is he implying? Good women are marrying trans. And they, I just don't get the... What's being replaced? Um, what's being replaced is, I mean, it's the same argument that Nazis used, also directly against trans people as well. Fun fact. That's what a lot of people that is uh, fun. miss. Yeah, that like Nazis weren't exactly too fond of trans people either. Uh, the first famous book burning that everybody knows about was uh, actually a, a you know, trans medical research that they burned. It was the first famous like documented book burning that the Nazis did. Anyway. Um, but their argument is that uh, trans people existing creates moral degeneracy and okay. perversion. Like they are an affront to God. Uh, they are uh, destroying social norms and constructs that hold Western civilization together. Okay. And that uh, when you see a trans person in society, in, in public, um, and, and you normalize that kind of behavior, more people will become trans. Okay. Just like they made the exact same argument about, about homosexuality. Uh, which uh, is no longer as fashionable or as appropriate to do so, but they're still trying to bring that back too, because it's not just about trans people. It's about like whatever they decide the norm is, and whoever is deviating from that is is uh, abhorrent okay. and must be eradicated. Okay, I see the point. It is interesting. I think if you accumulate how much thought goes into trans people between Jordan Peterson, Michael Knowles, and uh, who's that other uh, solar? Matt Walsh. Yeah, Matt Walsh. I mean, these guys collectively are talking and thinking about trans people probably more than the whole world combined. Yeah, no, they got trans on the mind all the time. Like, That's why they, I call it like a like a diagnosable mental.
a second. There's no audio? There's nothing right now. Give me one second. Has that been an issue at all? Give me a second. No. There's no audio? No. That's you, me right now. Wait. I just played again. What the audio sounded like. Play it again? Yeah, it's not like we're back now. Okay, let's yeah, it's back. Has that been an issue at all? It sounds fine. There. Shit. Shit. Must be eradicated. So we're good? Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're having some tech issues here, but it seems to be resolved. Um, so as I was saying, we are... Now they're saying no audio again. We can hear now. It was out for a second. Okay, now it's back. Okay, just open the stream. Let's hear what it sounds like. Okay. Um, but it, 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 so as I was saying... We... Sounds fine. Yeah. The button's out, Dan? Oh, we're flying. We're flying without flying protection. Flying close to the sun. You had to kill the button to fix the audio? Button. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a cabling issue, and there's really nothing. Like, I was doing my best to fix it, while, and it kept fixing, but then getting bad again. Um, and so now I've just bypassed the entire thing. We're streaming from Ian's computer directly now. We just it's ripped off the condom. Ripped off the condom. We're, we're raw dogging, baby. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you, Ethan. I'm sweating. I believe in you. Also, what's insane about this is that, like, uh, you know, you you can say whatever the fuck you want about the NRA or whatever, right? And then you immediately get punished for it. Conservatives go fucking ape mode on you. <clears throat> yeah. But for some reason, Michael Knowles can say what he's about to say. Let's watch, and then and then we'll talk about the subsequent lack of backlash. Hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. Then, for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. Huh. Yeah, so, so, so the way I interpret that is that when you're talking about the word eradicate, first of all, invokes like Nazi final solution. Yeah. And he says transgenderism which of course is the property, the intrinsic property of a person. So to me, he's just straight up calling for, to kill, round up and kill trans people. I mean, that's the way I interpreted it. And I think a lot of people interpret it that way. I, saw I mean, this, because that's what he meant. That's what he said. He meant, we must eradicate transgenderism. There is no peaceful solution to eradicate transgenderism because let's say your goal is to eliminate trans people from public spaces, but trans people are still going to exist regardless. Um, what do you do? You have to become violent at a certain point. Uh, if the state is not violent, then people take matters in their own hands, like the Q nightclub shooting that happened. Mm. Uh, obviously, that's kind of what they want to happen regardless, while they're simultaneously... Uh, utilizing the state legislatures all around the country to eradicate trans people by stopping them from transitioning, by by uh, punishing doctors, by punishing trans parents, by punishing trans children, by punishing anyone and everyone who is trans to make medical decisions, like stopping them from making uh, medical decisions that genuinely would improve their lives. Um, and and you know that's it. That's that's their very clear stated agenda because there's no peaceful way to like stop trans people from existing right you can't do that well, for anything you can't just be like oh yeah like eradicate. you know we got to eradicate uh you know jewish mentality from existence is not yeah. something you can fucking say because so his defense on this as people rightly got a little bit freaked out and again i remind you that this is said loudly and proudly on the in, the national stage for conservatives <clears throat> to cheering he insists that he wants to eradicate transgenderism as an ideology, not er eradicate trans people. Yeah, it's like saying, I'm going to outlaw Judaism. Not Jews, just Judaism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Does that I, make sense? Yeah, not totally, really. totally. Come on, guys. We're just, yeah, you know, we're not doing anything crazy. I mean, come on, come on. Hulk Hogan with a pussy. But the entire point of that is that, like, eradicate uh, Judaism. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, eradicate. It, it plays along with, like, the dehumanization, right? Like, he thinks that trans people are uh, an aberration that must be excised, that is not like a real thing. They're just like crazy people that we need to, uh, you know, play the song and dance with. But even if that was the case, then, you know, you could just like leave trans people alone, which by the way, that isn't the case for the record, obviously. But even if that was the case, you would just like leave them alone. That's a good idea. So, and yet that's not enough <coughs> because these guys are bullies. 
That's Stop it. They're weak Nazis people. All the time. They're more. They're worse than bullies. I mean, this shocked me really. Like, I mean, they're genocidal. But I'm like, saying, like, I'm using simpler terms so that like uh, people in the margins can comprehend it too. You are not a man if you go after people who are otherwise uh, not able to defend themselves. Look at this. You are not a man. Face. This is not photoshopped. You're you're a weak person. You are barely a person. You're barely a fucking human being. Dude, his smile is straight up like there's invisible fingers forcing a joke Bro, a smile on Bro, he him. looks like the, you know what he looks like? He looks like the fucking, like, uh, what is it? Like the, the claymation stop motion Christmas, uh, the Christmas specials that they used to play, mm. like the elf. He's an elfish, little elfish. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Santa's little oh. helper. Are you talking, you're not talking about the Grinch, are you? No, no, no. Yeah. What is the claymation, the uh, stop motion, like, Christmas special with, like, oh. elves and, like, Rudolph the Red-Nosed yeah, Reindeer? Yeah. Hermie? The, uh, no, it's Ray just... Rankin Bass. Yeah, Rankin Bass. It's just called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Was he the, was he the guy in that, who wanted to, uh, eradicate reindeers? No, bro. He <laughs> looks like one of the elves. Like, his face looks, oh, I guess not really. When but they I... smile, don't they <laughs> smile? I'm trying to find, and I think I know what you're talking about. Find a photo of one of these fucking elves smiling, and I, I promise you. Wallace? A Grimish? Yeah, I see that. He does have that. I can't wipe the smile off my face, Batman. It's like I was born to laugh. He does. He has, <laughs> he has, he has, he has claymation <laughs> smile. Maybe a snow miser? No snow miser. <laughs> Can we get a snow miser here? Snow miser, perhaps? A uh, snow miser. Snow miser. Yeah, claymation smile is like very specific. <laughs> that, that's what his his smile looks like—a claymation smile. Oh, yeah. So, um, what? Anyway, what I felt looking at him, listening to the speech, is that this is the face of the American fascist. Like this is happening in America. Yeah. They found their scapegoat. They're willing to be violent to eradicate, to eradicate. And um this is this is what it is. This I think their platform is becoming more and more fascist. And they've got their scapegoat now and they're ready to be violent. And people are on the national stage cheering about eradicating transgenderism. Of course he is a giant fucking piece of shit, coward. And he's threatening to sue people now, yeah. which just cracks me up. Yeah, CPAC speaker calls for transgender people to be eradicated, which is, like, literally, that's what he did, right? And then uh, he said, this is suable, this is libel, this is slander, like, I will, you will be hearing from my fucking lawyers. It's like, you're, you're such a baby. Like, you're, you're such a petulant little cowardly shit. Here he is. Yeah. Here he is on Twitter. This is his uh, Twitter account. He says, "This headline is libelous. I demand a retraction." Hey, Michael Knowles, you want to eradicate trans people? Yeah. There is no like. Oh, he's like, no. I meant transgenderism. It's like, oh, dude, got it. Okay. Yeah. So this is the face of American fascism right here. It's he happening. Slapped the, he slapped the ism on it, so it's different. It's not actually like trans people. He's talking about. He's talking about transgenderists, whatever the fuck that means. He's like, no, you don't understand. I made up a term, and I'm I'm actually attacking the made up thing that I, uh, that I'm talking about. We must eradicate. We must eradicate. Don't do it. Hamburger patties. Don't do it. Okay, don't. I know you want to do it. You we got no must button. eradicate. Don't do all it. La 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 la. Wait, okay. we got the button. Don't worry. No, we don't. Oh, we, we don't. We don't have the button. Just kidding. We don't have the button. Got you, God. Oh, I love. You're such a stinker. He scares me. He's actually such a fucking psychotic freak. He he's scares not me. even. He's not even like riding as hard as as Matt Walsh is. He's just trying to do the Matt Walsh thing now because he's like. He's a he's like not even the third best fucking guy at Daily Wire, which is the biggest <laughs> bell, dude. Is. Holy shit. <laughs> Bottom tier Daily yeah, Wire uh, guy. Do you Roland, think Matt Walsh is jealous of all the attention that he's all the transphobia attention? There's a that competition he's right now. Who, this is like Google, I feel like they are. Yeah. This is like Goobles versus uh I don't know. Who who's another prominent just, German? I'm uh, glad uh, that you brought up <laughs> I'm glad that you brought up a monopoly when talking about competition. <laughs> What, Google no, they're competing being? amongst each other for the favor. No, of... he, he was trying to say Goebbels. Uh, it just came out as Google. Uh, I didn't say on. Google. I said Goebbels. You, you, you kind of did. Oh, I thought you said Google. <laughs> yeah. No, bro. It's like not. Or it was kind of like Google. Yeah. 
Google. It was like yeah, halfway no, they're between like, Google oh, and Google. So anyway. Oh, mein Führer, I'm the best <laughs> transfer. Please love me the most. Exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly. It's, uh, that's Himmler. I want Look. to kill all the trans people more oh. than him. More, more. I promise. I'm being so mean. I'm being such a meanie boy, beanie. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, please, <laughs> Benny boy, put on the strap on. Uh, put on the cock sleeve. Oh. Your cock is too small to penetrate me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, Rolling Stone high, uh, 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 updated their headline after being threatened with a lawsuit. They said, CPAC speaker calls for eradication of transgenderism and somehow claims he's not calling for elimination of transgender people. Yeah. That's awesome. Also love that they didn't use his name in the headline. Kind of, a, kind of fire. And also it's under the category of evil, which apparently is a section of Rolling Stone's <laughs> <What> magazine. The- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let me just see what's going on in evil today. In the evil vertical, yeah. Well, better that than fucking what Breitbart used to have, which was black crime. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Right? Yeah. When Ben Shapiro worked there, by the way, fun fact, Ben Shapiro left Breitbart because he was like, I couldn't stand the anti-Semitism that was happening when the alt-right took over Breitbart. It's like, motherfucker, when you worked there, there was literally a tag called black crime. That is, that is fucking crazy. Yeah. It's almost like... And the, they're giving away the game in the headline. They're like, here's our propaganda. We are just talk about black crime. Yeah. Take out all the other crime that you don't want to hear about. Here's Michael Knowles saying that, uh, I'm pleased to see the Daily Beast lawyers scrambled to make them stealth edit their defamatory headline about me. Unfortunately, this tweak does not constitute a retraction of the article, which remains libelous. Michael Knowles says transgender must be eradicated. This is genocidal. I mean, it is. It is genocidal. I never said that. And just demand a own it, dude. Just own your shit. Why he is he being such a baby he about can't it? Because, like, he can't because it's like not fully institutionalized yet. It's the same attitude that, like, uh, you know, racist people have when, when you when you ask like uh, Nazis, they won't say that they're Nazis until they reach that final point. They'll just say like, "Oh, I'm a white identitarian," or "I'm just trying to defend white people." I'm just trying to stop white genocide from happening, because they recognize that like deep down inside being considered a bigoted person is not a good thing and you can't reach out as to a, as broad an audience as possible new study that came out uh, uh an ipsos poll actually just came out uh yesterday usa today and ipsos conducted a poll where they looked at the word woke mm. and what uh that what kind of it was it a positive image that it invoked or a negative one and it turns out 59 percent of americans consider woke to be a eh, you know positive thing where That's they consider it to wow. be um where they consider it to be someone who is social justice minded and only 36 percent of americans consider it to be like a, a smarmy annoying that is actually surprising over corrective and that really is a great snapshot for you to just like pull yourself away from the extremely online space for a brief moment and take a look at like what people who use landlines think you know what i mean that is interesting and, and yeah. all of a sudden you get a way different picture uh, same goes for uh, trans issues in general. I talk to trans activists all the time, including Aaron, who's uh, a, a wonderful journalist who's on that article. Um, I did a, uh, I, I was a part of a charity drive alongside uh, Juniper, uh, also known as Transgender Marxist, where uh, we talked to some, you know, uh, you know, we talked to a trans uh, state legislature, a state legislator, and numerous other trans journalists, and like what everyone recognizes within the uh, trans activism community as well, is that, like, for the most part, Americans just kind of have apathy towards trans people. Like, the normative position for uh, a lot of Americans is just like, yeah, I don't really get it, but, like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what the normies think. These people are basically honing in on transphobia as their main message, as their main movement, um, because they are getting reinforced from the cycle of hatred that they see from extremely online spaces. That's what they're cutting legislation off of. That and also the psychotic, like, uh, right-wing Christian uh, lawyer network, as uh, another trans uh, hacktivist uh, recently exposed. Mother Jones wrote an article about this uh, yesterday, that uh, there's this deep network of anti-trans movement like groups Mm. christian lawyers you know protecting the family group or whatever the fuck uh uh you know groups like this that directly have a line of communication with state legislatures and they play a role in like crafting the messaging and play a role in selling 
the the uh, transphobic uh, bills mm. that are getting pushed through in, in uh, almost every single state, with the exception of like really blue ones, right now, like they're they're this is very deliberate. And uh, I, I liken it to the abortion, the anti-abortion movement in this country. It took like around 35, 40 years for that to actually uh, finally become uh, uh, criminalized again, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they're doing that with trans people. And it doesn't even matter if people have apathy. It doesn't even matter if people genuinely do care about protecting abortion, for example. Ultimately, these guys will use extra legal uh, uh, circumstances and and push through their their narrative, push through their uh, nefarious agenda, their violent <clears throat> agenda, uh, no matter what it takes, even if it does not uh, appeal to the sensibilities of the uh, broader population. Uh, Matt Walsh, not he doesn't want to be outdone, as you noted, but from Michael Knowles, so he quickly went to Twitter to win back Daddy Benny boy. And he said, we were minding our own business when suddenly the trans movement came along and demanded that we totally abandon biology, common sense, and truth itself for its sake. Our war against this scourge is a defensive struggle. They started it. They wanted this fight. Now they have it. Yeah, they just can't leave trans people alone for some fucking reason. Like, you started just, it. That's like pretty, that's like, the Jews brought this on themselves. Yeah. That was 100% Nazi playbook shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, establish an enemy, uh, an enemy that is both strong and weak at all times, right? Mm. Um, and, and vilify them endlessly, dehumanize them endlessly, make them out to be the, the villains of every single thing that you feel. And in a society where people are uh, experiencing economic instability, volatility, and resentment, and they have no good prescriptions because any kind of left-wing commentary is completely removed from uh, most liberal spaces as well within media, uh, and the only thing that you hear is like these guys making outside-of-the-box pres prescriptions. Yo, look at this. Sorry, go ahead. You, uh, this no, it's fine. I, I, you know, we we can we can move to this. This is a perfect parallel. So listen to this, Joseph. Goebbels, Goebbels, Goebbels. You can call him Goober. Fuck him. He was, of course, a, fam a very famous Nazi, the head of propaganda. He said this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you calling him a Nazi? I think he was literally a member of the Nazi <laughs> Wait, party. hold on, hold on. But did he say he was a Nazi? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you need to give me more conclusive evidence. No, he was literally a member of the Nazi party. I don't know, man. What's next? Are you going to say Kanye West is a Nazi? Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, uh, that one's more debatable, but I don't think anyone... the Nazis all the time. Yeah. Uh, he said this about Jews. Now, once again, let's read this tweet. He says, We are minding our business when suddenly the trans movement came along, demanded that we totally abandon biology, common sense, truth itself. Our wars with the scourge is a defensive struggle. They started it. They wanted this fight. Now they have it. Now let's go over to what Goebbels said about uh, the Jews. He said, The Jews wanted the war, and now they have it referring to Nazi pro propaganda scheme to shift the blame for the world war onto European Jews. The Jews bore the brunt of the Nazis' first... No. Is that it? I mean, but that, that's, that's just like verbatim what he said. Yeah. The Jews wanted the war, now they have it. It's like... You know... It's so preposterous to look at now. You know, Everybody it's not... agrees that what a fu what, how crazy this was. Yeah. Yet here it is, happening right now in America, 2023... It's not the hatred that really offends me. It's the plagiarism. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like distasteful. Yeah. Uh, that you would just uh, rip uh, this this guy that uh, Ethan is calling a Nazi. Yeah, well, he was a member. He was literally a member <laughs> of the Nazi party. <laughs> oh, wow. Once again, no diversity of ideas here. No, he, he, uh, no, well, he was like Hitler's best friend. Wow. Are you saying that people with differing opinions can't be friends with one another? Got them. <laughs> no, no they had the same opinion. You don't know that. <laughs> you weren't there. You weren't there. Were you in you the room that. when Hitler and Goebbels was talking strategy? Yeah. It, it's just a fact, in my opinion. It, it's uh, Goebbels' hate for the Jews is greatly exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah, so Matt Walsh <laughs> taking a play out of the Nazi handbook almost verbatim. So that's fucking dis disturbing, you know what I mean? 
That oh, here. show, The Leftovers, which is a great show, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate that. So there, that's what's going on at CPAC, ladies and gentlemen, the, in, the national platform for conservatives. Yeah. But, you know, the good of that is that the conservative party is basically imploding. And, uh, you know, uh, it's literally because of this, because there's a very active part of the base that demands more and more violent rhetoric because they're like, we're Christian fascists. Like, please give us some give us crumbs of Christian fascism, please. And then there's the other side that's like, I just want to make sure that, you know, we can slowly but surely melt poor people into biomatter, right. which is fine. Like if we do it through fascist means or whatever, but like, it doesn't seem like you're allowing us to do it through fascist means currently. Like we'll get there eventually, but what we care about is the deregulation aspect of it. Um, and, and those guys are basically conflicted amongst themselves. There's like a little bit of infighting. I do think that there's a lot of class solidarity amongst the bourgeois. So uh, ultimately, I think they'll get together and realize that like they have a common goal that unites them. So, uh, but uh, in the process, this back and forth is uh, funny to watch and, and entertaining. Um, you know, they're fucking freaks. Trump, of course, gave a speech at CPAC. Yeah. Which was, of course, uh, <laughs> accompanied by a lovely ad for gold coins. Love that. Trump speech special. Isn't that just no, so no, perfect? No. It's great. Text Trump to 65532 to get your free gold coin. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Quite an offer. Oh. Yeah, here he is. Uh, Challenge the governors of all 50 states, all 50 states, to join me in a great beautification campaign. We will rename our schools and boulevards, not after communists, but after great American patriots. Bro, I don't think, I've never been down like Marx Street or like Lenin Avenue. I don't know. There's one privately owned Lenin statue in Seattle that they like make a big stink about all the time, which like, you know, good luck. Lenin was pretty fucking cool, so suck my dick. But it's, it's not every street. Now not my run. camera's broken. What is happening today? Oh, no. Leftover speed is out. I'm dead. There I'm you are. Gone. You're back. You're back. I'm back. We have a lot. Now. There's a ghost in the machine. <sighs> yeah. It's trans people's fault. Well, I'm sure of it. Well, technically, this is what? This is the 40th episode, right? 40th. Yeah, which means... One episode more than what we did with Frenemies. Yeah, one episode more than you did with Frenemies, which is why, like, I think the, <laughs> there's a ghost that's trying to ruin it. <laughs> They're mm -hmm. like, no, we're not, oh. we're, not letting you, we're not letting you film this episode. How dare you? We're filming it, goddammit. Yeah, we're trying our best here. The button is gone, chat. We will and yet, get rid of the button is gone for this episode because yeah. it's static. Um, <clears throat> button. Bad and ugly buildings and return to the magnificent classical style of Western civilization. We will Dude, why is his pores so visible? This man's he has pores on his nose that like go down to his sphincter. Like this man has pot giant holes in his face. Wait, wait, go back. Wait, can you go back to what he was saying? He's talking about ugly buildings. Like what? Yeah, yeah he, is, he, is he anti brutalist architecture? Yeah, like, no, he's literally one of the Greek statue guys on Twitter now. Like, wait, okay. To be fair, and I know this is probably my like most anti communist uh, counter revolutionary sentiment, but like I don't really like brutalist architecture either. I mean, that's fine. So. Uh, that a political I, talking point. I guess we should let him see. Yeah, they get very, they get very uh, worked up about <laughs> architecture. We will get rid of bad and ugly buildings and return to the magnificent classical style. I, I don't, e I don't even know what. What are you pitching? Like, like we have so building. many problems in this country. He's like, we're gonna get rid of all the ugly buildings. We're gonna tear them down. Start all over. So it's a beautiful building. This is wonderful because like when you talk about like the beautiful classical styles in American architecture, like that does not exist in America, you fucking idiot. Like that's not a thing. There is no coherent city planning in this country, let alone like uh, any kind of any kind of like zoning restrictions that that uh, pertain to anything other than like allowing single family housing to occur by design and by, uh, you know, by making it basically illegal to do anything else. And there is no like, uh, there is no coherent aesthetic within uh, American architecture, unfortunately. Well, I just like the idea that he's going to be bl blowing up buildings. I will be destroying buildings that are ugly by. I'll determine which ones are ugly. We all agree. Yeah. Also, like, 
his his whole vibe is like ugly as shit. So I don't know. I don't know what his like He's gonna be, idea of beauty is. I'll be the. I'll tell you what's beautiful. I'm gonna go up and down the street with a with a cartoonish TNT plunger, blowing up buildings. Hmm. Frank Western Lloyd Wright, Sellers. folks. You hear this guy? Can you believe it? <laughs> made the made a building, melted cars, folks. But he made some good designs. We gotta bring him back. <laughs> Sorry. We will support baby boomers, but and we wanna... will support baby bonuses for a new baby boom. How does that sound? What is he talking about? He's saying we want bonuses for babies to be born. He wants um, a baby boom. Yeah, no, he's like he's talking about the the uh, birth rate de decline, which happens to every developed nation, obviously. Um, when you when you have a developing nation, when you have a well developed nation, as a matter of fact, is that, that really a crisis at th at this moment? Is that really an no? Issue because America has America? like a lot of immigration still. Okay. In comparison to a country like Japan, that does not allow immigration or makes it very difficult, mm -hmm. um, where they do have a dramatic uh, birth rate decline. They need a baby boom. Legitimate crisis as a consequence of that. We need bonuses for babies. But anyway. So he's, uh, this is interesting. He says his speech was packed. He said on his uh, Truth Social, CPAC was packed for my speech. You couldn't get into the building. Special thanks to the area fire department for making it work so well. But then, as if this, this isn't the first time he's uh, lied about a crowd size, but here is during his speech. What the fuck, bro? Is that really, what? Yeah, you can see him on stage. Yeah. Dude, there's like 10 people there. Yep. Yeah. The Go fire off. department was, thank you for regulating. <laughs> <laughs> the only fire risk I see is all those empty chairs, man. That is something. Holy Yeah, that's fuck. what I mean. Like, L plus ratio plus Trump was washed, but also, like, so was DeSantis, so... Like, there's no real, uh, you know, there are no real DeSantis heads in the same way that there are uh, Trump heads out there. Bro, this is emptier than, like, open mic night. Yeah, this CPAC kind of came out of nowhere. It shocked me. I didn't even know it was happening. Uh, and I thought it was because it was in Japan. Turns out Republicans didn't hear about it either. Um, Apparently I missed the best part of this video at the end. Well, best is... It's the governor's... Why not, baby boy? It was, by the way, that, that I think that is Photoshop, for the record. That photo that you showed, I think, is Photoshop. What? But it was empty. Like, the, the back side of the... You, you know, it, the room was, like, half empty, for sure. Why does it lie? Wait, why does it lie? It, it's not as... Uh, it, it wasn't as, like, crazy Where's as that. Where's the real I'm photo, sure. then? That's Photoshopped? I think that might be Photoshopped, the, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I saw some other. I saw some video from Could it be the this event. the real one? Because that's pretty bad too. Yeah. No. 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 It's not good at all. That's what I was. Well, I want just want to see the real one. That's I what want, I was referencing. Like, I want to see the real one. We'll look for that. But in the meantime, here, let's finish this. Oh, you men are so lucky out there. You're so lucky. You are so lucky, men. Challenge Why? Because we get to get lots of babies. Yeah. Shout out Nick Cannon. By the way, the reason why he's saying that is because he wants, um, like, you know, white babies. white Americans yeah. to. We love our white babies. We got offering bonuses for the, the whiter you are, the higher the bonus. Yeah. The only reason, yeah, the only reason why, like, uh, you know, America doesn't have the the birth rate crisis that like Japan has is because it has a steady flow of immigration. <clears throat> I'm doing my part. I'm having a third baby. That's crazy. Because I says. It's not enough just to keep it going at two. We need to repopulate three. We're going you know all what's out. Funny, that's a major flex for you. That like you could you could own like ninety percent of these like fucking red pill nerds. Where you're like, dog, you have no children. Like, fuck are you? Nobody even about? loves you, bro. Yeah, you don't have a wife. You don't have children. Shut the fuck up. Stop chirping on fucking podcasts like a woman, and instead go find a woman. You know, Dude, what they I mean? call me fat, but at the same time, guess what's fat? Your my semen brain. load, <laughs> like what? I did, yeah. I took a fat load in a cup. Nice. Then I tasted it, and I went, "Yeah, it's pretty good. It tastes fresh." Oh, it's you gotta hit the fresh. Bro. I don't know why I said that's disgusting. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't taste my semen, but um, Cap. not that I haven't. It's just at that time. That's gonna no, be I'm sound bad. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding.
So you have or you haven't? I've. T- it's just a. Jo- everything's a joke here, folks. I felt worthless. I felt <laughs> ugly. I felt gay. I felt that no. Uh, <laughs> that like, that's good, that's what, what you told, told me. me. But okay, one yeah, thing but I want. Yeah, but so I'm repopulating. One, what are they? Tim Pool's out there crying like no, the, you know, I can't get a date. I'm repopulating. So who's yeah, laughing now? Exactly. Bitch? You are. You Maybe are. They have real, a four kid. You are the real trad. You are the trad lifestylist. Those guys are right. just fake, dude. They're I am. Phony. Bro, like, I oh, am. I love the Catholic Church. Like in my adulthood, I decided to convert to the to the religion that is like most notably known and associated with pedophilia. Like, listen to my podcast, please. Meanwhile, this motherfucker's out here having children, dog. What are you doing? Having Dude. no children, zero child. Listen to my life. I go home. I spend time with my wife and my kids. I don't even drink. I don't do drugs. Well, maybe that's not trad. But, like, we no, eat no, no. together, it, it, we it sit together, I'm having kids. Who the fuck are you, bitch? I'm traditional America. I'm the new America. This is the yeah. face of America. You are way this more is conservative. This the face of the man who's repopulating America. Who the fuck are you, bro? Yeah, get you to can't work. even find a woman to touch your dick, let alone to even brush your shoulder. You creep. You filth. Castrated? You're castrated by your political might ideology. Well yeah, might as well be. Honestly, at this point, fucking... You're getting none. You're getting none, dude. Absolutely. When are you All having kids? <laughs> trad. My dude, trad. I'm not, I'm not trad. I, I I am a a moral degenerate. Like I I, I ride with that. That's when why they hate me. When are you having kids, dude? Dude, I don't. Fuck you got plans that. for kids? You want kids? Yeah, I do want. Okay, kids. Okay, good. Let's get them out there. Let's yeah. pump them out. It, All you guys. When? Kids? Wait, how old were you when you had your first job? Let's see. Theodore is going to be four in June. So how old were you? Vis a vis. Crunch some numbers. Thirty-three. You were thirty-three. God damn. Neither was thirty when she had her. Okay, I got. I got two years. Or I, I, I guess I, one year. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you know, you said something funny that I didn't comment on. You go. Oh, when when Liver King asked goes, Do you have me, kids? You said I'm only thirty-one. Yeah, I, I was, was like, like no, I'm 31. And then I, dumb. no, no, but as soon as I said it, I realized like, fuck, that's actually a, like the having... time when people have children. Yeah, big time. Yeah, but it, it rolled off the tongue so easy for me because I think future generations will probably also look at that and go, yeah, what do you mean? He's 31. But right now we're in the in-between phase where like 31 is like kind of the time when you would have children. It is. It is because you're established. Hopefully you're more, you know, you're more, uh, I don't know, who gives a fuck. Just have some kids, son. Don't make me beg. <laughs> You have you found someone to have kids with yet? No. No. Maybe. Who knows? You so maybe you have found someone to have kids with. No, I just don't. I don't. I, I'm not thinking about it at all. You know what I mean? Are you single, Hassan? Why do you always do this to me every time we're on on this podcast? Do what? E- like, we, I don't want to talk about my private life. Okay, please, let's enough. move on. That's all you had to say. That's all you had to say. Cut, kill the music. He's doing this. He's doing this Pull because out. he wants. He wants. He sees all the thirst posts on the H three H three subreddit, and he's like, "We gotta, we gotta, we gotta cut these thir- I thirst." I just want to know. I know. I just want to know who you are. Yeah, but clearly, you've seen the Hassan thirst posts on the subreddit. I have seen the Hassan thirst posts. Like, bro, going. what the fuck? I love it. <laughs> Mr. Piker I don't pay that much attention to the thirst posts. Hunk of a man. <laughs> yeah, tell the mods no more thirst posts on Hassan. Only Ethan thirst posts. Thank you. Those ones get like 50 upvotes, by the way. The Ethan Thirst Bows do? Yeah, they don't do great. Yeah. They don't do that good. Yeah, I'm married to the game. <sighs> they go, I'm Ethan's so hot. I have, 30, I have like 30 to 40,000 kids. Whatever. Technically. The, in my the Thirst Bows go, is, Ethan's hot. I don't care what anyone says. And in the comments, they're like, yeah, he's, he's okay. He's not that bad. He's not as bad as people say. <laughs> That's my thirst post. You look good. Have you been dieting still? Have you been keeping up the diet? I've been, I've been steady. I'm not gaining weight. I'm getting ready for another. Oh, play. you're like I'm doing maintenance, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Not funny. What's funny about that? I mean, I don't know, because you were kind of killing it. You were on a tear, losing a lot of weight. I'm, I'm prepping myself. I mentally. gained six pounds in Japan over the course of you six did? days. Yeah. I ate so many fucking egg sandwiches. Oh, wait, I was gonna ask because you say oh. you don't eat fish. I don't eat fish. So what was your? But primary... I sent you that photo of me and Connor with the meats. Yeah. Oh, I love meat. The Kobe was that like a? The... That was in Kobe. Oh. Yeah. How I was went it? to Kobe to have Kobe beef. It was one of like his top five meat experiences, top five dining culinary experiences of my lifetime. You know, I had a at a nice restaurant once. I had like a little cube of it. 
of the real stuff. That's the only time you've ever had it? Yeah, it's because... Like one time? The, the one time. Plenty of restaurants in America that serve A5, like real A5. Right, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I haven't had it other than when, than that. Mind-boggling. Like the me. real shit, though. You are, you are so rich, and yet you eat literally frozen pizza. And then you've only had A5 one time. Like, what's the reason? What's the purpose? Like, wealth is meaningless if you can't fucking uh, enjoy the experiences, the food. Because I'm a man of the fucking people. How many times do I have to tell you that? Yeah, I You know. are such a classist yeah, piece of shit. I am. I literally am. I ride the train. I take Wait, the bus. What, what train? I eat fucking frozen pizzas, yeah. and I eat discount steaks. <laughs> Ethan is so rich, he has his own train. And I'll dude. have you know, Hassan, as a man of the people, that I proudly eat frozen pizzas. Yeah. And I do, I take it even further, I treat myself and sprinkle a little cheese on top before it goes in the oven. Jeez. Yeah. Because I'm a man of the people. Because you have to people. do that to make it edible. Otherwise I eat it's cereal in the morning. I love pizza. What kind of cereal? And, uh, I don't pizza. even have cable TV. Wait, what kind of cereal? Lucky Charms, motherfucker. Okay. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is my shit. Or Cap'n Crunch. Can oh. I tell you a secret okay. about Lucky Charms? What? What's the secret? This is gonna blow your mind. What? If you compare it to all other breakfast cereals, it has the lowest calorie per cup. It will blow your fucking mind. It's 140. You look at all the healthy cereals, they're like 200, 220 per cup. Yeah, all that shit is bullshit Lucky anyway. Charms. It's low calorie. When is the last time you had one singular cup of cereal, though? Oh, Like, bro, that's my I mean, problem is, like, I can't... talking about calories, but... Yeah. yeah, I can't have, like, one cup. That's my issue. That's why I never have cereal, even though I love cereal. Yeah, cereal is, is not... It's not a safe meal, because you just go all over. Yeah. All you might like be right chips. about the calories. How much sugar does Lucky Charms have? Well... I mean, it's literally marshmallows in there. I'm talking about calories. Yeah, marshmallows <laughs> okay, are just sugar? straight sugar, so it's low in calories. I mean, that's where all cereal calories come from. They're all packed with sugar, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, okay. Yeah. Where else is it coming from? You know? Hmm. I'm, have to I'm willing to bet this. they found a way to just, like, you know, because it has a lot of marshmallows, maybe they just, like, put the... <laughs> they're, they're like, here, in this one cup of Lucky Charm cereal... There is no even distribution of marshmallows. There's like one marshmallow. You so they're they, like, it's 140 oh, calories. They're budging it? They're stealing it? They could actually do that. That's an interesting theory. No, I mean, all of this stuff, all of the food regulation is so stupid so, in this country. So, um, what did you eat, though, before you, before you decided to viciously attack me for being a man um, of the people? I had a lot of, so there's like a convenience culture there. Like, convenience stores are incredibly popular, and they are very consistent. Good shit there? Ooh, 7-Eleven like is huge there. 7-Eleven has its own bank. 7-Bank. Really? Yeah. Oh! 7-Eleven yeah. is like up? What do you a, eat from the convenience? A gigantic store? franchise. Um, so they have everything pretty much. They have sandwiches. They have like cold food that you can uh, warm up right there with a, in a microwave. Wow. I didn't try those. So is there chefs in back making it and just putting it in the vending machine? No, I think they have like massive facilities where they make it and then they distribute it all across Japan. But the consistency is what I'm talking about. Like, there's so there's Lawson, Lawson's, and then there's like a natural Lawson's, which is like one level above that, I guess. What's Lawson's? Uh, Lawson's is a convenience store. Okay. Uh, Family Mart is another one, and then 7-Eleven is the last one, right? These are the three main convenience stores that you can find everywhere in Japan. Okay. And they all pretty much, give or take, have the exact same stuff. But what would you get out of there? Uh, egg sand egg salad sandwich. Egg salad sandwich. You lived. You lived on that. I had like probably six to ten every day. But how good can an egg salad sandwich be? So good. It's it's just egg and mayonnaise. It's so good. I don't know how they. It's just they they struck the perfect balance. Um. So I had a lot of that, and then there was like katsu sandwiches that they also had that I had like the pork cutlet sandwiches that I had a lot. Ham and cheese sandwiches. I had a lot of sandwiches from convenience stores. Uh, a lot of fried chicken from convenience stores, which are also decadent and delicious. It's, like, weird to think about. But, like, 7-Eleven fried chicken is... I mean, Family Mart, 7-Eleven, and Lawson's fam uh, chicken. Fried chicken is incredible. Fried chicken? Yeah. And so, what what was the prices like? What Did, did you find it to be expensive? Or Very reasonably? cheap. Incredibly cheap. America is so fucked. Yeah, no, in Japan, um, the the cost of living... Depending on, I mean, housing is very expensive regardless because, like, Tokyo is super dense mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the jobs are there. So there's a massive problem with that. But other than housing, 
uh, food, for the most part, is super cheap. So how much was one of these egg salad sandwiches? I don't remember. I don't know the exact number, but like... How much yen was it? Do you remember how much you paid for it in yen? I think it was like $2, $3. Wow. Yeah. You cannot get a fucking... You can even get an egg, one egg for $2 here. Yeah, it's 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 definitely significantly cheaper. But That's of fun. course, the average wage is like lower too in Japan. So yeah. there's that. So we're, yeah. But yeah, uh, and, and the meat quality is incredibly high. You like, had it's 10 a of those a day? The amount of, I mean, I had that. I had like and? a lot of raw meat. I had a lot of raw meat. They do, they have like... Raw beef? It's almost like a flex, yeah. Hmm. They even have raw chicken in certain places. Oh, I, did, I did not try it. Nah. I did not try it. Hell I did not try it. I'm not nah. brave enough, but you know, it's it's mostly like a, like a flex. Chicken sashimi? Uh-uh. Yeah. No thanks. Um, Hell nah. But, um... Oh. Were people stopping and taking photos with you? Were you like a like a freak? There? No, kind of? I I think like when I walk down the street in Los Angeles, uh, you know, I get probably the same amount of stares that I do in Japan. It wasn't like that crazy. Are I you, didn't notice it. Okay, uh, that's interesting. I thought yeah, I didn't I didn't feel like I actually loved it because like I, I had less fans there. You know what I mean? Right, because you don't get enough. Right, right. You yeah, just, so, you're bombarded everywhere you go with. Fans. Not bombarded, but like, mm -hmm. there's always an element of like, uh, you know, people looking over uh, when I'm in public or mm -hmm. people coming up, which mm -hmm. I don't mind. I, I love, I love my fans, like obviously, but, um, like when I'm live streaming, it's virtually impossible to do that in America at this point, like without a fuckload of people coming over. And and trying to take photos, whereas in Japan it was like, you know, it happened, but not nowhere near to the same frequency that it does in, um, in in the United I think States. That's one of the reasons PewDiePie moved there is because people don't know who he is there. That's got to be nice because he was so famous. Yeah, I I totally understand why he he did that. Like I get it. I'm I, I'm I would do it too. Yeah, I get recognized when I go outside. It's like crazy, you know. People, it's crazy. I gotta be like, yo. Do you uh, do Everybody you do chill. you go outside a lot though? Think about that. Like how much how much time do you no, spend outside of this studio and outside of your house? Not a and lot. And the train. Not that a you lot. Frequently ride. That's what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I am the man of the people. On the bus and the train happens a lot. But like if you're constantly outside, if you're constantly like, well, then I go grocery shopping. Like, you know, I get I stopped two to three th times. You know what I mean? By yeah. people that either work there. or... I haven't been in a grocery store in years. Man of the people. Man of the people. <laughs> I don't leave my house. Uh, I don't leave my house. In fact, I, I think I've gotten a measure of almost social anxiety, let's say. Or, I don't know if it's social anxiety, but it's like some kind of anxiety of being out in the world. It's not exactly agoraphobia either. It's just like, I'm so used to, you know, not being outside. I feel awkward, some, like out in the, you know, out in public. I, I understand that. Oh, you yeah. do? Thanks. I understand that. I mean, my my interaction in the real world is also severely limited, too. So, would you say that uh, it would be healthy for Ethan to maybe himself take a trip to Japan? I mean, he could maybe take the podcast with him. Um, you know, we could do, like, a special out there. That would be like, fire. Do you think that'd be good? Have you ever been? Anxiety? Yeah, no, that's to, a good idea, Dan. I can just to, do it. I can just do it myself on my phone. Really you don't need a little budget. bit of help. I mean, you just always... run and gun, you know what I mean? a little bit of help. record it, like, you, old times. You're not the best with he, You know, you are that's a good... That thing. is a good idea. I'll run and gun it. If Japan. you go, I'll come with you. I, I, I've, I've... Yeah, well, there you I, go. Look, I've traveled... I've traveled to Western Europe a lot, obviously. I grew up in Turkey, and, um, I've been all around Europe for the most part. And uh, out of every single place I've visited, I've never felt like, oh, dude, I want to come back here immediately. I hate traveling, but like, interesting. With Japan, I was like, I need that. What Any was excuse. It, what do you think it was about Japan that appealed to you so much? Um, I don't. I've been literally grappling with this myself, trying to comprehend it. But I do think that um, Japan is is almost contradicting to like everything I believe and see and experience. There's a lot of issues in Japan that are brushed aside for the most part, especially if you're visiting as a tourist for a, for a little while, right? You don't get to see the full thing. Mm. You don't get to, you know, peek uh, inside the curtain. Right. But um, it's hyper-capitalist. America wrote its constitution. 
right? There's so many issues that come from that, but because they have like thousands of years of rigid structure and tradition and instilled understandings of, of uh, collectivism uh, that is reinforced through a culture of shame, which can be very damaging, right? Um, it, it just kind of makes it work. You know what I mean? One example I use is there's like so many different railroad companies in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of complications that arise as a consequence of that. There's like, uh, there are issues. You have to like constantly switch over lines and, and all this stuff, right? Um, going through different uh, municipalities. Um, however, when you look at a country like America where there's very little public transit, it doesn't even matter. And they somehow make it work. Uh, and it and that transition still is relatively seamless, mm. and it's really weird because like if in America if you had like Amtrak and and uh, other uh, uh, carriers running on similar lines, you'd be fucking constantly hitting one another. Like every every public transport train would be like <laughs> literally doing head-on collisions nonstop. <clears throat> um, but it works in Japan. It works. So you like Japan because it works. Yeah, I mean, I I like it because it's uh, it's a, a a developed nation that has uh you don't like undeveloped nations i mean there's a i mean i grew up in a we hate we i literally hate grew up in nations. one so well, i mean unquote, i can say it's don piker we and hate I also, developing nations i well i i like the structure of a developed nation that has like a, a decent amount of wealth but is able to in comparison to the united states of america make more work mm. with less okay okay um okay, okay, that's yeah. what it is for me in particular should we talk about um i have two other things we can we don't have a ton of time but and it's all about the respect we've got the tucker got his hands on the january 6 footage from um we've also got dominion lawsuit which i think is pretty good yeah. How they were able to get all the texts from them and the, yeah i um, love that discovery it's really good i'll show you guys the text Tucker. Um, we can go through the January 6th footage really quickly if you want. Like, because that's not <laughs> as long as a, um, there's not as long as a video or anything like that. You can just like show. This one's actually really easy. And I, let's just do this one and then we'll do that one because okay. if we run out of time, I think this won't be easier. Tucker. It's easy to set up. So Dominion is the voting system that Trump, Fox News, and, uh, you know, uh, Newsmax and all these guys were saying. Their machines are not safe, and they helped facilitate the rigging of the election. Now, Dominion is suing all those people, specifically Fox News, for $1.9 billion in damages. And defamation lawsuits, as I've said on the show many times, are very, very hard. Because you have to prove, essentially, that the person defaming you knew what they were saying is wrong. And, you know many times you just don't have the kind of evidence to support that kind of uh, of a finite yeah. claim. But what's happening with this Dominion lawsuit is really interesting. In the process of discovery, they obtained text messages from Tucker. They explain, uh, They got text messages from... Um, Murdoch. Murdoch. They got text messages from uh, that other big head guy. Hannity. Hannity, yeah, and also yeah, the Laura, Laura Ingram, Ingram. yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, all the executives is a star-studded cast. It's wonderful to see them uh, in private in the way that they discuss these matters and the disdain that they kind of have for their audience. Like it's they, so cynical. They're completely aware that they are, uh, you know, they're they're posturing on television to an audience. They're of lying. fucking they're, baboons. They're knowingly lying. Yeah, it's so, and, and it's they know so they know cynical. how stupid their their fan base is. Uh, Alaskan bullworm wants to know why your haircut makes your head look normally proportioned. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I paid that person. Yeah. yeah, is that you? That was you, bro. Yeah, that was me. I was, I was tweeting it from my phone. Yeah, so here on Trump's business history, as, uh, as votes were being counted in 2020 presidential election, Mr. Carlson texted one of his producers fretting about viewers turning away from Fox News after the network called Arizona for President Biden. The producer said Trump has a pretty low rate of success in his business ventures. Tucker Carlson responded, that's for sure. All of them fail. 
What he's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that, Tucker said of Trump. Continuing on, on Trump's plan to skip Biden's inauguration, a staff member texted uh, Carl Carlson to say they'd heard Mr. Trump was planning to not attend the inauguration, an important symbol of the peaceful transfer of power. Carlson said, I'd heard that about the inauguration. Hard to believe. It's so destructive. It's disgusting. I'm trying to look away. He said of Trump not going to Biden's inauguration. Yeah. He's almost like a normal guy behind this scene. No, it's funny because it's like, like that's what I think. No, he's not an he's not a normal guy. Uh here's why I love that. Because like I, unlike yourself, am infinitely more cynical about like uh the American government and also like all this symbolic shit, right? And what it means. So I don't care ultimately. Like I'll 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 talk about how crazy it is and how funny it is, but like deep down inside, I don't really give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. Um but it's funny that Tucker Carlson, on the other hand, is like such a uh, civility liberal after all, even though he himself is like a, a devastating wasp nationalist who cuts racial agitprop every fucking night uh, in a very successful way, if I may add. Um, deep down inside, he's still like, oh, I can't believe he's not doing the symbolic stuff, though. That's you're undermining the the integrity of the American institutions. Like, please. But if you could go to his broadcast for that night, I'm pretty sure he'd be like, why? Why should uh, President Trump go to the inauguration when there's so many questions about the legitimacy of the election? Well, he's literally doing that right now. <laughs> Number three uh, on his interaction with Trump's team over Sidney Powell, uh, the psychotic Trump lawyer. He texted with Fox News' Laura Ingram about Sidney Powell, a lawyer for Mr. Trump and one of the biggest promoters of the election fraud claim. Carlson said, I had to try to make the White House disavow her, which they obviously should have done a long time. Of course, she was a guest on his show several times. Laura Ingram said no serious lawyer could believe what they were saying. Carlson says, but they said nothing in public. Pretty disgusting. And now Trump, I learned this morning, is sitting back and letting them loose Lose the Senate. He doesn't care. I care. I, I, it's like they're saying behind the scenes how much he cares about doing the right thing, but then he goes on his show and does the opposite of how he personally feels. No, 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 no. He doesn't care about doing the right thing. Understand this. Tucker Carlson ultimately is a rich guy. Yeah. Right? He might have a uh, legitimate like ideological reasons for why he's promoting, you know, fascist uh, ideas and concepts. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, as a rich guy, he cares about just, you know, maintaining his wealth and serving the even richer guys that pay him hundreds of millions of dollars. <clears throat> so Donald Trump, in certain instances, when he does stuff like this, when he undermines the integrity of the American institutions, is actually presenting a danger to the way things are for wealthy people because if the system collapses entirely then all of a sudden the the super rich guys are are not going to be able to turn profit in the same way that they are able to right now it's always better to like not fully starve out the population and give them some breadcrumbs to make them uh, feel comfortable in their existence than it is to like truly undermine the entire system let it crumble uh, because when you undermine the entire system and let it crumble as it stands currently, when there's still problems <coughs> to be made, um, you're going to, you're going to give up on a lot of, uh, your amenities, a lot of your, your, but if it, it, he just, I guess it, you could say more specifically, he's going against his own interests when he goes on the show and, you know, goes with the talking points, but he goes on, this is about the aftermath of the Capitol riots after the riots at the Capitol on January 6th, Mr. Carlson texts. With Mr. Pfeiffer? Who's the Pfeiffer? Is that a pr producer? Yeah, that's the producer. Okay. About Don, uh, Mr. Trump's culpability in the insurrection, how to deal with viewers who still support him. This was two weeks before Biden's inauguration. Carlson says, Trump has two weeks left. Once he's out, he'll become incalcul incalculably less powerful, even in the minds of his supporters. Carlson continues, he's a demonic force. A destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. I've been thinking about this every day for four years. Pfeiffer says, you're right. I don't want to let him destroy me either. The Trump anger spiral is vicious. Carlson says, that's for sure. It's deadly. 
It almost consumed me in November when Sidney Powell attacked us. It was very difficult to regain emotional control, but I knew I had to. We've got two weeks left. We can do this. What? These conversations are so ridiculous, too. <laughs> well, Tucker Carlson, I mean, shouts out the Roger Ailes, uh, rest in piss. But, like, uh, uh, you know, Fox News as an institution is was designed uh, deliberately to be the propaganda arm of the Republican Party and the Republican interests, right? So... Tucker Carlson having this conversation uh, in private is hilarious to me because this is the exact same conversation that is happening in every uh, uh, every circle in the Republican Party because the party machine currently has these two conflicting forces. They have geared up the base to be more and more extremist, right? Because the culture war is the only thing that keeps people going, keeps people going out to the polls, keeps people going out... And voting because like you're not offering them any sort of material restitution. You're not offering them anything. You're not offering them health care. You're not offering them like financial freedom or anything like that. So how do you make work the deregulation uh, uh, narrative? How do you make work the, the tax cuts for the wealthy narrative? You shift the attention away. You pump up the American dream rhetoric. And then you shift the attention away from like the genuine damaging impacts that this kind of attitude has. This Reaganite, uh, Reaganism attitude has on on the economy as a whole, and you focus on marginal issues, culture war issues, and you create this culture war agenda. And you constantly have to, you constantly have to push that button over and over again, and people demand more and more and more. So now you've gotten to a place where Donald Trump sees all of that and reads the room very well and is able to communicate the culture war narratives without, without the dog whistles, really. Mm. That's why he's so appealing. But when you do that, um, when you when you uh, you know rush to your uh, base of support that hard, you will cause instability. Mm -hmm. Like Donald Trump, in many respects, was a victim of his own success. Yeah. Uh, the reason why the Republican Party is currently suffering electorally is because they caved to the demands of a uh, hyper vigilant, violent, extremist base of support that they have in the form of uh, white. Uh, uh, white Protestants, mm -hmm. right? Um, they make up a tiny percentage. Well, not tiny, but, uh, you know, not a large enough percentage to, like, win elections nationally. Mm -hmm. But they capitulated to them. They created the Federalist Society. They set it up uh, and, and designed systems to specifically concede to their demands. And once they got those demands, which were inherently anti-democratic, and the only way to achieve them was... Uh, going against the wishes of the majority, when they did that so brazenly, all of a sudden people are like, "What the fuck? I'm conservative, but like, you know, I have a daughter. I, I and God forbid, what if she needs to get an abortion? I'm conservative, but I'm seeing young women all around the country uh, who are not able to get medical procedures from their doctors because the doctors are afraid that they're going to go to jail mm -hmm. when they have like when they're, and they're forced to give like stillbirth uh, uh, abortion. I mean, um, when they're forced to give birth, birth to a stillbirth fetus." Right? Yeah. This um, was my favorite one, by the way. Uh, and I'm wondering if Trump, I feel like, has to respond to this. He goes, on his desire to move on from Trump, Carlson said, Mr. Carlson texts with members of his staff two months after the 2020 election and two days before the insurrection at the Capitol building and looking forward to not having to cover Mr. Trump. Carlson said... We are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. I truly can't wait. He says, he continues, I hate him passionately. Carlson says he Same. hates Trump Base. passionately. And so, um, Talk <clears throat> I wonder if Trump's going to respond to that. But the, what's interesting about this is that you have proof, hard evidence, of Fox News uh, pundits saying exactly the opposite of what they're saying on the air. And it's interesting that it's turning out that uh, they have a very compelling case of defamation, Dominion voting. So, you know, they might actually win. They might actually win that $1.9 billion. That'd be so sick. I mean, it's hard because, like, I don't know how much money Dominion has, but, like, I know Fox News has, like, great lawyers. This is an open and shut defamation case, but it's still very difficult to win those. So Unless I, you're Johnny Depp. So they're shopping for uh, judges right now. Yeah. The Fox News ones. They're trying to find, like, super conservative judges who are, like, Fox News watchers and stuff, trying to find sympathy. It's not going to be that hard. No, it's not. It's not going to be that hard. Um... <clears throat> 
Fox Corporation yeah, they, has yeah. four billion cash on hand. God That's damn, awesome. dude. These motherfuckers got a bank account with four billion dollars in it. Yeah. Love that for them. Yeah, we're I mean, we got more here at the leftover compound. We Easy. got twenty, but like <laughs> yeah. I mean they're broke boys, but yeah. I just can't get over again. We always talk about how uh, lucrative the grift is, and I just so happy for them. Yeah, they were able to make it, you know. But <laughs> going back to the Tucker Carlson thing, like there is a dual interest here, right? On the one hand, they don't want to rock the boat <laughs> too hard, but they have to hammer on the volatility. They have to hammer on the the violent narratives, right? But on the other hand, they don't want to rock the boat too hard because like they still want to make money. They still want to live in comfort, right? And and uh, that's the issue. That's the reason why he has to toe this delicate line of like, you know. Uh, immigrants are dirty and need to be purged from this country while simultaneously not saying it too much, like mm -hmm. not going too mm -hmm. kooky with mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. election narratives, which is why, and this is a decent segue, I think, back to the other uh, video, Tucker Carlson recently came out with the January 6th footage. I do want to tell you we have about three minutes before. That's I fine. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is this. You want me to pull Tucker it up Tucker Carlson clip? was sent 41,000 hours of footage Mm -hmm. From Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House. Yep. So that they could comb through 41,000 hours of footage. And Tucker Carlson cherry picked through 41,000 hours of, of footage, I think like around five minutes of the January 6th insurrectionists like walking around peacefully and with the cops like walking them in. And Here stuff. it is. Here's the footage that they showed. Yeah, you can even play it as like B roll in the background with no audio. Yeah, go ahead. And for some <laughs> weird reason, this is like a narrative that works for a lot of these fucking uh, absolute morons <laughs> that like five minutes of footage on a very public event that we all watched happen two fucking years ago live on national television on my fucking Twitch channel through probably a million different fucking angles because there's so much cam so many cameras there, so much CCTV footage, but also because the fucking idiots that were doing this shit we're literally filming themselves doing it. You know what I mean? Because they didn't think Where's they'd get the clip, any punishments guys? for it. They didn't think what they were doing was wrong. But uh, but I guess Back. turns out like five minutes of, uh, of of peacefully walking through can make up for the forty one thousand other hours of of them being violent and and psychotic. Um, one of the key moments that I uh, I love in this is that uh, they talk about how like the police were basically guiding them around. And uh, I'm like, yeah, no shit. Because, you know, cops are fucking, they, they love the hogs. It's like pig on pig violence, uh, ultimately. They are one the same. Um, and that is precisely the reason why they were walking them around. Just yeah, here, like. Here it is. Here's the footage that apparently is a smoking gun. Of the like, why is this a smoking gun? We saw <clears throat> cops take selfies with motherfuckers well, I, literally on January 6th. Like, I was covering it live. I'm confused because when I see footage of the cops escorting them into the chambers of Congress, I think that, oh, yeah, well, the police are also, as we knew, hogs. Uh, big. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. also like fascist, it's racist pigs. freaks. So I don't understand how, how this footage supports their narrative. I'm confused by it. I think they're implying that, like, there's this other underlying con uh, narrative because they, they, they threw a lot of shit at the wall to see what stuck, basically. I do wonder, what the fuck are these cops doing? First they, they said it was Antifa. First they said it was Antifa. But then they were like, but also they shouldn't go to jail, even though they're fucking Antifa, apparently. Right? So then that didn't stick. So now they're like, oh, the January 6th insurrection is our political prisoners that must be freed. Now they're prison abolitionists. They read Angela Davis. Why are they <laughs> Why are they taking this guy straight to the chamber and opening the door for him? I think it's partially because they were scared. I think that's what one of the cops testified at the at the uh, when the committee uh, you know brought him up to the to the stand. Seemed I think he was calm. like afraid of like what these guys <clears throat> might do because he was walking around with like a you know with the with the flagpole. But there's like a whole mess. And of they cops are terrified there. pussies, so that does That's make sense. They, and I can actually, there actually is an explanation for why they were doing this. Tell me. Uh, that the cops gave is that the defendant challenged a U.S. Capitol officer to let them pass, ultimately using his bullhorn to rile up the crowd and demand the lawmakers be brought out. Um, they entered the chambers. The officer falling behind 
them until there was sufficient law enforcement to presence to clear out the room. So yeah. the thing is, is they cut off the, what they show oh. is this footage. There's a ton There's of people a, already because all there. the cops are outside trying to stop the crowd. There's only a few inside. These people get in. They, there's way more of them than there are cops, so they just try and de-escalate, and they're like, yeah, okay, just here, I'll, I'll show you around. They wait for backup, and then right after all of the footage that Tucker showed, a bunch more cops show up, they round everybody up and arrest them yeah. and move them Which, out. by the way, some of these guys have okay. zip ties and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's also, you know, they're this not here, there th to be peaceful. This shot, I was like, well, there's like 10 cops here in Riot. So here's the thing. Well, yeah. here's the thing, though. Here's, here's what I will say. The reason why, what, what they're trying to say basically is that that cop that died of seizures like the next day, mm -hmm. he was not hurt is what they're trying to say. He died for unrelated causes, okay. which I think is pretty funny for them to like do this like, you know, a cab style, uh, you know, it, cop murder is fine when we do it narrative, which is pretty funny. Um, but also, I think they're trying to imply that like, I'm sure you've heard this narrative. Nancy Pelosi purposefully refused to bring in the National Guard. Mm. And Nancy Pelosi is the reason why the Capitol was not protected on that day. Which, again, still shows that, like, these... Vi that, doesn't, that doesn't eliminate the fact that, like, these violent hogs were behaving in this violent way. You know what I mean? Like, even if the, even if the cops weren't there, like, that's insane. What they did was, was uh, you know, completely illegal and unacceptable. So, so the part they don't show is that there's already a bunch of rioters inside the chamber, I'm assuming. That's what the that footage is him walking to the chamber. And yeah, it, he wasn't the first one in there. No. So so that makes sense if there's like a angry mob inside. Yeah, they were also, like tr trickling in I don't know. through broken windows. But I, I also don't have a hard time believing that some of the cops were sympathetic to them. Probably. Yes, they were. They were taking selfies with them, yeah, Ethan. Yeah, they were exactly. taking selfies with them on the day so of. To I, to me, I talk about this a lot. To me, all it says is that the police were Our sympathetic shit. to them. Yes, That's the Capitol Police is notorious for like beating the shit out of uh, you know disabled people in wheelchairs and stuff. Whenever they you know uh, have the audacity to protest outside of fucking Nancy Pelosi's office, so these guys aren't exactly good guys either. Okay, so I hate this like mainstream media narrative of like our hero cops were not being sucked off by the by the conservative movement today and they were being attacked viciously, but like these guys are pieces of shit too. Okay, they're not nice. So. The thing, I guess, there's a movement to free the January 6th Patriots, and I guess this this is part of that, where they're like, they weren't, they didn't even force their way in, they were escorted. Mm -hmm. So they want- Set they, up, as a frame job. They want to free Trap. the January 6th heroes. That's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, there's a ton of people in there. Yeah, they're like, they were doing a peaceful prayer, like, that's what they're making it seem like. Yeah, brother, <laughs> they were, they were definitely just, they were there for peaceful reasons. They made it seem like it was a, it was like a- <laughs> like a tourist day at the Capitol, which I think is hilarious because again, this level of like reality denial is unimaginable to me, but I, I guess like the American conservative movement is at this level of cognitive dissonance that, uh, that they will genuinely deny what they saw, which is not that surprising when you consider if you've ever talked to someone who is a conservative who went to the fucking Capitol on January 6th, and I know people that have, they literally still say it was peaceful. It was actually peaceful, and also it was Antifa. I'm like, bro, you were there. There's like, you videos. were. Are you Antifa? There's <laughs> videos of them. It's weird. It's like Everybody it's all there. Them. Yeah. So I, I have to leave, but I'll just read this statement from the Capitol Police Chief. He said, "the The program conveniently cherry picks from the calmer moments of our 41,000 hours of video to incorrectly portray the violent assault as more akin to a peaceful protest." He added that Carlson's commentary fails to provide context about the chaos and violence that happened before or during these less tense moments. All right, I got to go. Thank you, Hassan. Nice to have you back. Um, God bless. Uh, I know you're not happy about it, but I'm glad you're back. Yeah, you I'm know. glad to be back. This and, was uh, great. And uh, we're, we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna take leftovers to Japan soon. It, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ethan's gun. dime. Oh. Ethan's gonna pay for it. It's gonna be great. We're gonna have a great. I'll time go with Hila and just one camera. It'll be great. Just right. I'll times. operate that camera, and you no problem. No. I'll be happy. To. No, you won't. It's fine. Hila's got it. Uh, she's she's gonna be busy. She's she's gonna be pregnant. She can't. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back on Friday, which is tomorrow for After Dark. Peace and love, peace and love. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.